Thank you very much for joining our open event and welcome to Independent Living Skills. Uh, may I remind you that your microphones are muted and we can't see you. You may already know that Colleguent has four campuses and we have an ILS department on every campus. My name is Emma Parsons. I am your presenter for this event. I'm currently based at Pontypool and I'll be moving to the Torvine Learning Zone in Cumbran. I'm delighted to introduce Jill as our moderator for this session. Jill is based at the Blind Gwent Learning Zone in Ebervale. And if you have any questions, please post them in the chat and Jill and I will do our best to respond either now or after the event. So our courses. We have different pathways within the departments and a range of courses at different levels. Life skills is our main programme and there are several different life skills groups on every campus. The course is person centred and it is usually the starting point for new ILS learners. We also run vocational study courses which have qualifications attached to them at different sizes and they prepare learners planning to progress onto level one courses. Supported internships are offered at Cross Keys and they blend work placement and time in college. You may do more than one year on the same course or you may progress from one to another. Everybody's journey is different. So if you haven't already applied online, you can do so through the college website. The link will be available in the chat. If you search ILS and apply for the main programme at your nearest campus, we can change your course at a later date if needed. Once you've applied, you'll be on the system for representatives from your nearest campus to contact you. So where is your nearest campus? Is it Cross Keys, Newport, Pontypool, Alcumbran or the Blinder Gwent Learning Zone? If you could pop in your nearest campus into the Q&A, that would be great. Um, and if you feel that you'd like to discuss your requirements before you apply, you can put your email um, into the Q&A for us to contact you. Uh, all contact details will be, of course, private. So what's covered? Our curriculum is made up of four pillars, independence, health and wellbeing, community and employability. You set your targets for each pillar. You have one session of each pillar every week and literacy, numeracy and digital literacy skills are embedded within the four pillars. So what would you like to learn? If you can type in the Q&A what you're interested in, we would love to hear that. And the reason I ask that is because you choose your learning. We run elective sessions. They differ from campus to campus and the sessions are put on in response to learner interests. This year we've done animal care, media, Duke of Edinburgh, drama, hospitality, swimming, gym and craft and others as well. You might be with a learner that has been in the college for longer than you and you don't have any other sessions with them, but you share the same interests. Electives give you the chance to try a subject you might like to do a full time course in after ILS and they also give you skills for work experience or volunteering or a hobby. Additional learning support. Additional learning support coordinators are based on every campus. Please tell us if you've had any support in the past, whether it was specialist equipment, one to one support, for written work um, or anything else or maybe extra time. Please let us know how best to support you. So once you've accepted the place that we've offered you, you'll be invited to a meeting to complete a form. This is the beginning of your individual learning journey. So you, a person from home and a tutor, complete a personal review in September. The form will ask questions about the four pillars of the curriculum that I mentioned earlier, independence, health and wellbeing, community and employability. You decide what you'd like to work on and we agree targets together. Progress is reviewed at Christmas with your tutor and a third formal review takes place around Easter when destinations for the next academic year are finalised. Staff monitor and record progress and achievement in addition to the formal reviews throughout the year. Uh, Jill, do we have any questions at this point? Thanks, Emma. Evening, everyone. No, not at the moment, Emma. All the questions are private or individual to each learner. So I've taken details so that we can get back to them. Oh, that's fine. Thanks very much, Jill. 
So you choose how to record your journey and you can use the way that suits you best. So you can use photographs, video, artwork, written work, computer work and documents. We will give every learner a personal journey book uh, which stays with you and goes between college and home. Staff and people at home can write in here too and you need to use this to help you remember your targets and track what you do. We also do use Wakelet for an online personal journey collection. Staff will show you how we use this, but it's absolutely brilliant because you can put videos on there and staff can give you feedback um, and it's a really positive uh, tool that we've been using. We've also got a personal journey work file. Uh, this is kept in college for book, booklets, worksheets and any learner documents that are printed. In the past, we've won We've run lots of events and we hope to do so again, obviously in line with social distancing rules. They have been brilliant and past events have included Christmas fairs, Easter events and summer garden parties. They give our learners a brilliant opportunity to uh, experience work. They make items to sell and they serve customers. And we also develop a sense of community within the college and wider community. And we encourage parents and carers to come and see what everybody does. Transitioning learners are also invited to see the activities they'll be involved in and meet staff and the students that are in the department. We really enjoy welcoming uh, new learners, potential learners and also the family of our current learners and we always enjoy showcasing all the amazing work that they do. So uh, the next steps then, if you haven't already applied for a course at your nearest campus, please do so using the online application form. Uh, the link I said Jill has uh, put in the chat. Uh, please share any information about how to support you um, with the campus ALSCO. It's really important that we meet your needs. Um, if you'd like to con us to contact you, before applying, again, if you pop your email or number into the Q&A, as I've said before, that's going to be kept private. Uh, and then we will schedule an appointment uh, with you and your tutor to complete your first review. So once you're on the system, we will contact you to arrange this appointment and it will happen in September. Any questions uh, now that we're coming to the end, Jill? No, nothing, Emma. Um, nothing we need to go through. Okay. All answered on chat privately, so we're all fine. That's lovely. Thanks very much. So if you haven't already, uh, there is the opportunity to have a virtual look around each campus. So the link will be provided in the chat and it's really great to see some of the spaces, um, see the main reception area um, and get a feel for um, the campus that you will be going to in September. So if you haven't done so already, please have a look at that. Um, and uh, if you stay on the line now, uh, transport and finance information is available after this presentation, OK? Um, I, I've been M Parsons and I'd like to thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much, Jill, for all the Q&A as well. But I cannot stress enough, please, if you have any questions, please get in touch. Um, everybody's uh, position is personal and um, we're more than happy to discuss your individual requirements. OK, thank you very much indeed.